Let me give a small introduction. So first of all, I would like to start my own life at the age of 23. Okay. Where I realized um, it was in a moment, I still see it in my mind's eye, that particular moment where I okay. saw, but how I see what we are doing as a, as a, as a species, as a people, mm. is really not for me. Okay. They, it came about in other words, very different words, but in a flash, I saw, oh, but what about, oh, but what about, and I just couldn't figure out what does it all mean? Yes. And so I then went on a journey uh, to say to myself, let me find a big enough break in my life where I have enough money and where I have enough time to go and find out what those thoughts that I had meant. I was pleasantly surprised the closer I got to establishing my pattern of a conventional life, the less impressed with it I was. And so one thing led to another, and I'm skipping decades on my story that Fair I'm enough. telling you. And one thing led to another, and then I realized actually through a variety of things, what my life really means. So I found what it means for me. Yes. Then it took me another few decades to figure out now, now that I know that, what am I going to do about it? Because I'm trapped in the conventional going to work, needing to earn money. But it was not satisfying at all, whatsoever. And then at some point, I started sensing, oh, wait, 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 wait. Then once I found that, of course, now what to do with it, and it came about uh, in a casual discussion like we are discussing now, um, but this discussing, the discussion was really just shooting the breeze. But what we were shooting the breeze about, two of us, stuck with me for very, very long. I could not shake it no matter what I did. I could not shake it. And that led me to what I thought was what I could do with what I discovered. Because I desperately wanted to share my finding with the likes of yourself and anybody who was willing to listen. So, but the only thing I figured how to do this was one-on-one. -on -one. And, and the way my whole temperament functions is I think very big. I can't think small. So everything I do is on a big scale. So I could, as a young man, go into a very big company and say to them, okay, wait, I will sort this problem for you. Okay. Where there were very many people with more experience than myself, but I could see the big picture quite easily and that led me into being quite successful in my c conventional job but never and the money was never it for me so fairly recently i then started stumbling on how i could get what i found with myself and share it to the world at a massive scale okay and of course, that was a fantastic moment for me. And now how to get that, to share it with the world. And I then got into a very tight spot where I knew the wording that I had to share this wasn't good enough. It would take too long. It, would, it was just not efficient. And I'm a person which works highly on efficiency. So the thing was, I then saw it, but I knew I didn't have the vocabulary to share it. So we are now at that stage, Linda and I, that we see the bigger picture. We're busy formulating words to be able to talk about it. We're creating our vocabulary. So that in a nutshell 
is where we are now. So now I would like to share the way forward between Linda and myself, but in a nutshell. I see what we are doing now as a garage startup. And okay. instead of us making this or that or salad, we are creating peace. Okay. Now, I think I'm fairly certain that the recipe that I uncovered with my own journey is also a journey that I could then facilitate other people to walk that journey as well. And the end result of that is creating inner peace, which of course evolves into outer peace so that we have peace as humanity. <clears throat> Now, where we are now is that we see with the garage startup, we've got all these grand ideas, especially from my side. Yes. No money in the bank. Yes. And, but as we are moving forward, we're not only creating a vocabulary, we are creating the business model, which is now, I think, neatly tied up, the financial model, which I think is neatly tied up. And right. now we see that the job is very, very big. You can imagine mm. if I want to spread this message to 7 billion people, it's mm. not a small feat. Uh, and the idea is now we're in a phase where we're looking at who does our message resonate with okay. to the extent that they say, okay, let me roll up my sleeves. Let me come and make peace with you. You know, there are loads of modalities out there of how to achieve inner peace and all of that. I mm. think what I, uh, what Emmanuel has not highlighted and what I would like to highlight is that what he is talking about is that he actually um, has something that is kind of like the recipe for peace for humanity. I get it. Yeah, so seeing humanity as kind of like we've kind of hit a glass ceiling. Right. And we 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 are trying to go, but you know what? The there's actually a way that we can achieve peace on earth. There's there's actually a way. Ammonia always says if there's one percent chance that this is true and it works yeah. <laughs> then we have to spread the message yeah. like there's a there's a there's an urgency to get this message out and to 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 share his vision with the world and to say you know this this has been my journey and i actually want to share it i feel that i can give something to humanity that can take us through that glow ceiling um, and can basically evolve us to peace. We want to take humanity to that next level. Um, and um, the recipe for it is actually quite simple. If I may now say that humanity is just another project in my eyes, Okay. I saw the root cause of everything that we do to each other and to ourselves, starting with ourselves and to, to um, everyone else and to nature and to the sea and the trees and everything. Yeah. And it all boils down to just one thing. Okay. Just one thing. Very simple. Just one thing. And of course... I would like to share that just one thing, what we do today is we don't do, our actions don't reflect that we do whatever we do for the benefit of everyone and everything. We do it exactly for the opposite of that, but that is just a symptom. Okay. And the symptom is, uh, and so what we have done in humanity is we are polishing those symptoms better and better that we need to all see the root cause, which is going to help us get through that ceiling that 
um, Linda was speaking. Now, once we get through that ceiling, which is a very small step we need to take. Yes. And it's like this. May I share that with you? Yes, yes. Okay. So the root cause is that each and every one of us, from my stance, remember I'm generalizing and right. I don't want to minimize anybody, but is doing everything that we are doing, everything that we do. There's not one thing that we don't do based on that. And that is to prove that we are worthy. So, and I'm making it in very, very simple terms. So we continuously do stuff, whatever that is that we do. To prove worthiness. To prove that. And of course, it's not possible to prove it because we are worthy. That's the beauty uh, of it. We yeah. are worthy. worthy. And I want to awaken people to see that they are worthy as they are. They are beautiful. So because of that, and because I need to fill that void, but please remember, I'm saying that void does not exist in anybody. Okay. It does not. It's a right. self-imposed void. Now, that in itself is also something very beautiful and unique. So it's a self-imposed void. Yeah. which I try and fill, and I try and fill it not by blossoming myself, but by taking. Whatever I can do, I'm going to take. I'm going to take. I'm going to take. I'm going to take. I'm even wow. going to take the Amazon. I'm even going to spoil the sea. I don't care. Whatever I take, I have to fill that void. Now, what's beautiful about this is that void, first of all, is not real. Number two, that void is self-imposed. Uh. And consequently, we, each one of us, I can't do it for you. Nobody can do it for somebody else. But we are each able to recognize that and then stop with it. Yeah. But that's very easy, very easy, very easy to say, very difficult mm -hmm. to do. However, and once you do it, from all the time and money that I spent to then find out, well, how do I do it from needing to survive in this life, mm -hmm. but yet also switching or balancing that with how I sustain myself? So inside of our financial and our business model is even the answers to all of that. Like this hand has got what it's got to be this hand. Yes. This is not more important than this. That is not more important than that. All of this has to work marvelously and harmoniously to be this hand. Correct. Mm. So each one of us is going to take up a piece of this hand, but in the piece evolution notion. So mm. whatever you are about, right. you are going to bring this. This is just a platform for you to bring. No, 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 but right. if what I found in my conventional work and also in my own journey, is true. Remember, I said there's a 1% chance, or as Linda reminded me now, now, that it is true. And if that is true, you would thrive. Every one of us thrive the moment we are doing which is important to us. And this is just a platform where you are with other people that are in that same frame of mind, like-minded, and it's not about me, it's just I'm creating a platform and the business and the financial model and I need Linda and I need you and I need whoever is crazy enough <laughs> to come and join.
Okay. So holacracy, as I understand it, is a self-governing organization. Mm -hmm. So like Emmanuel said, you, you come in and you energize whatever role you energize within that organization and you autonomous in that role. Yeah. So you don't have a hierarchy of someone telling you what to do, but mm -hmm. you bring your skill and your temperament and everything that you do well or like yeah. doing yeah. to the table. Yeah. So the bottom line is when I discovered Holacracy, I realized that it speaks very nicely to the, because I can't see that peace ever, and I'm not that type of a person in any case where I want to be somebody's boss okay. and where that person needs to be bossed or when they need to do something in their, in their role that they need to go somewhere to get an answer. I say, make your own choices, fumble, stumble, fall around until you settle into your role. Yeah. Now, holacracy is something that's currently around about 10 years old. It yeah. has been adopted in very many companies, a variety of companies, uh, for the purposes. And, and during my study or my research about holacracy, mm. I discovered, funnily enough, that humanity has, for the last roughly 30 years, been seeking different ways of running company. And holacracy is now one of the many that is established structuring a business in such a way that there is autonomy, complete autonomy by the person who energizes the role as, as uh, Linda said now now. However, okay. there is governance. So the, it's, not a, it's not a hierarchical structured org. It's not a, a boss underling uh, org. It is autonomous and there is a lot of information about this. And I am in the process of training to become such a coach. Okay. Yeah. However, I have now done enough to see that I don't actually want to go all the way to become a coach. Mm. I could also, on a do-it-yourself basis, our business, our peace evolution business, could um, adopt holacracy mm. without me needing to be a coach. The next thing is then we realized we would like to work. We don't want day jobs and do this as a startup, we want the startup now to start bringing in income. Yeah, so it works like this. So this is where we're going to go public and really start making an income. But let's say for now, there is an offering, it has a chance, and we're going to earn big bucks. Mm -hmm. And that's not what it's about, but we also need to learn. Correct. So to get there, Beca it became very evident her and I could not do that unless we want to wait another few decades. Mm. So what we did was we pulled that back and said, okay, let's see. Her and I are still going to do it on our own because nobody might join us. Mm. So please just keep in mind. And this is also one of the foundations of holacracy. While you haven't got the people, you still get on doing the work. Okay. But if you have the money or somebody and you're able to fill the role, then the, the load is lighter. So we want to go to the market with a product. And the product is to elicit people who are also looking for something that they want to do with their lives, but they don't know what that is. Uh, Coaching. There's also a whole thing about how I feel we need to structure uh, the product range to get to the millions of people we need to get to. So that means we could, instead of it being in two decades where we have an income, 
we could in two or three or four months have an income. Okay. But how we work it is that everybody who joins earns equally. Mm. So if we earn a hundred dollars, we split it three ways or two ways or four ways. Okay. okay. So that means we have a very clear path. Mm. Mm -hmm. And the question that I asked myself is, who are the people that would join? Oh. Good I question. I asked that as an abstract. And so Linda and I have also discussed divine intervention and surely it can't be incidental and so on. But my view is that people the ones that would be joining us, Linda and I've not shared this with you either, is incidentally, but I would like to fetch the story somewhere else. Nature is self-healing. If I cut myself here, nature is going to heal this. If I break my arm, nature is going to heal this. But here comes a very interesting point. But if it's badly broken and it's skew, the healing would take place skew. Uh. And humanity in the physical form, in the form of doctors, have realized this and said, wait, let us just break it and straighten it and then cast it so that it could heal properly through nature. Now, if I take that a little step further, we are also part of nature. We are not separate from nature. We are nature. So the people who are going to join, Linda, would be people that are at a point in their lives where they see some form of healing needing to take place, even if it's with inside them, but also external to them and saying, oh, but who are those people going to be? I sense that it is somebody, of course, in a conventional position or no position, but they would also be part of something that needs healing beyond their own healing. Okay, <laughs> so the long and the short of the story is we've got a plan. We, I can't wait for 20 years. So by creating the, the, by going to market, uh, we are creating the opportunity to, to get people who want to stop in their own lives the feeling that something is missing. That's number one. Number two, they might even turn around and say to us, well, how do I uh, recognize my purpose? I would then assist them in, in, in a training course, which we would, of course, sell. And everybody who participates uh, earns from that as a collective income. And the big thing I think that, it, that that's going to do is bring the confidence of not just slogging away day after day, week after week, month after month, but we can see that we've achieved something, even though it's very small. I think as part of my sharing, I, I probably managed to convey that this is not a trivial project. Um, it is something very, 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 very big. I see that to get this message out is going to, is going to require some very clever people, some mm -hmm. very special people. And I just mean it from a point of that they have some skill They've recognized that skill and they recognize and they resonate with what peace evolution is about. 